Today we're talking about Portland, the nation's hottest travel destination for unnamed federal officers. It seems the Occupy movement has gotten so popular that even the federal government is drying its hand. Now, more than a hundred uninvited federal law enforcement officials have entered the city of Portland and begun to anonymously enforce federal laws. My goal today is to serve up the coldest take you'll find on YouTube about what's going on. Basically, I'm trying to transition this conversation from, wow, that seems really illegal to, oh, so that's why it might be illegal. So what's going on? Well, this story begins a few weeks ago with an executive order. President Trump issued an executive order. It declares anyone who vandalizes or destroys a monument, memorial, or statute should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, so does Customs and Border Protection. A United States Customs and Border Protection spokesperson said that agents had been deployed to Portland to support a newly created U.S. Department of Homeland Security unit, tasked with enforcing last month's executive order from Republican President Donald Trump to protect federal monuments and buildings. So Customs and Border Patrol is now patrolling America's border with the Pacific Ocean. You know, just making sure all those boat people stay on the water. So that's all probably coming off a bit strange considering protecting federal buildings and statues doesn't show up in a Customs and Border Patrol job description. That's the wrong kind of customs. Well, there are a ton of statutory authorities that allow the federal government to use a wide array of federal law enforcement officials to enforce federal law, including destruction or vandalism of federal property. So if you're any sort of federal officer and you see someone vandalizing federal property, you can enforce that law. I mean, America isn't about to send a bunch of ICE agents to Chicago to make sure that those Canucks stay on their side of the border. Now that would be ridiculous. No, we're sending them there to make sure that nobody touches our statues. Now, to drive that point home, officials noted that ICE agents would not be involved in immigration or deportation matters, just when you thought liberals couldn't hate ICE anymore. Yep, the cable guy showed up, but not to fix your cable, just hanging around and seeing if anything happens. Either this is a porn, or you should probably get out of my house. So this may seem like a pretty simple story. Immigration officials are going into large cities to ensure people don't commit the federal crimes of attacking statues, federal buildings, or other federal officers. Where's the drama? Well, it really comes down to the quirks of state versus federal law that came to a head in the lawsuit that was recently filed by Oregon's district attorney. A surprising problem emerges right off the bat when you read this thing. Who do you sue? Well, you could sue the Customs and Border Patrol or the Department of Homeland Security that oversees them, led by acting director and man who definitely stole his name from an 80s Sylvester Stallone cop movie, Chad Wolf. Wow, that's real. Problem is, these arresting officers aren't identifying themselves, meaning that John Doe's 1 through 10 are also named as defendants because they made it impossible for them to be individually identified by carrying out law enforcement actions without wearing any identifying information, even so much as the agency that employs them. Yeah, that might be a problem in a lawsuit. The lawsuit in question lays out the story we've all heard repeatedly on the news. On information and belief, unidentified federal officers, including John Doe's 1 through 10, have detained citizens off the Portland streets without warning or explanation, without a warrant, and without providing any way to determine who is directing this action. There is no way of knowing, in the absence of those officers identifying themselves, whether only U.S. Customs and Border Protection is engaging in these actions. The Marshals Service and other Homeland Security agencies reportedly have also been sent to Portland to respond to the protests against racial inequality. Now this brings us to two separate issues. First, do federal officers have to identify themselves when they're making arrests? And second, were these arrests illegal under the circumstances in question? So first to the question of identification. 
There is no general requirement under federal law that federal law enforcement officers disclose either their identity or the identity of their employers. Now, This means that if you arrest someone for a federal crime, the cop has the right to remain silent. Of course, once you leave enforcing federal laws and enter enforcing Oregon state laws, the rules change. The Oregon statute that authorizes federal law enforcement officials to enforce Oregon law requires officers to identify their authority and their reason for making the arrest. Still though, as long as these arrests are being made in the name of protecting federal buildings, statues, officers, and other federal crimes, it's a bit of a gray area. Take for example one of the protesters who was arrested without warrant. The Customs and Border Protection spokesperson said that the agency had information that person was suspected of assaults against federal agents or destruction of federal property. Now, it's never a good sign when your justification has an or in it. Yeah, we had information connecting him to vandalizing federal buildings or assaulting federal agents. You know, the two things we were sent here to prevent. That's convenient. Uh, going down my list, what else are we allowed to charge him with? Ah, he might have been advertising wine in a way that suggests it has intoxicating qualities. That's also a federal crime. That federal criminal. Now, because they were pursuing federal crimes, they did not have to identify themselves, although it's a common courtesy. Because of this, the Oregon DA who filed the lawsuit didn't directly address the legality of these anonymous arrests, but rather finds issue with the negative externalities they generated. Basically, hey, just because something's not illegal doesn't mean you should do it. I don't scream nonstop on public transportation because technically it's not illegal. I'm not touching you. Oh, I'm not touching you. Don't be that guy. Just tell people who you are, or at least who employs you, when you arrest them. Their specific complaint had some weird details to it. Oregon citizens are at risk of kidnapping by militia and other civilian volunteers taking it onto themselves to pull peaceful protesters into their cars, in a manner that resembles the federal actions described above. Wait, that's a problem over there? Oof. This episode certainly isn't turning into a Portland tourism ad. Come for the zombie donuts. Stay because you're an alt-right militia hostage. Oregon's own police agencies are therefore injured by roving federal officers confusing citizens about whether they are obligated to comply with armed men ordering them into unmarked cars. It's hard to know whether you're resisting arrest or escaping a kidnapping. I mean, which unmarked vans with armed people do you get into? Well, this one's offering free candy. If all of this sounds bad to you, well, a new bill was just introduced days ago in the House of Representatives that would require federal law enforcement to disclose such information when arresting someone. The other legal issue I alluded to earlier was with the question of whether these arrests were performed legally or not. These arrests were not made with a warrant, but rather citing probable cause. That's when a law enforcement official sees you commit a crime or has reasonable basis for believing that someone has committed that crime. If you're a cop and someone starts shooting people, well then you don't want to have to call up lawyers and start the paperwork around getting a warrant. So you say probable cause. You want to act. Now this is the accusation where the Oregon State Attorney General really hit the cap's lock on his lawsuit and filed the majority of his complaints. Because the probable cause defense of these arrests is murky at best. So far, federal authorities are yet to show real evidence to back up claims of probable cause, save for a litany of alleged violations by DHS Secretary Chad Wolf. Still awesome name. There has been an incredibly slow trickle of information behind these arrests, which is raising alarm bells. So what do you do when you think federal police are breaking the law in your state? Well, you take them to court with the goal of injunctive relief. The main thrust of this relief is to apply legal scrutiny to these arrests and stop arrests unassociated with probable cause or warrants and are unjustified. 
Honestly, there is so much secrecy surrounding what people knew at the time of the arrest, though. Well, I don't really have any details to get into on this case. I will say, when it comes to small stakes of federal crimes like graffiti on a federal building, the lack of willingness to release evidence does raise a bit of a red flag. If we show how we knew that Chad drew a dick on the courthouse column, the terrorists will win. A former lead ICE lawyer explained, Federal agents can still detain the demonstrators away from federal property if they can assert probable cause that a federal crime was violated. Homeland Security's authorities are so extraordinarily broad that they can find federal laws that they are authorized to enforce across the spectrum. So long as it has something to do with national security, public safety, human trafficking, or criminal street gang conspiracy. Using that framework, we'll see if they can properly defend these arrests in court. So that's the legal minutia of what's happening in Portland right now. Federal law enforcement enforcing federal laws are not required by any specific federal statute to reveal information about themselves. But if they start enforcing state laws, an Oregon state statute kicks in and says that they do have to express their authority and the crime they're detaining someone for committing. They haven't started enforcing state laws though. Since they are asserting probable causes justification for their arrest but being super cagey with the evidence, the courts are going to have to decide whether to step in and judge the constitutionality of those arrests against the Fourth Amendment. I hope I could bring some objective clarity to this incredibly alarming and complex issue. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.